Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. So this is quite a big piece of progress we can see here. We've made it to space I've, we've, and we've set up some initial science up here as well. Now at the moment most of the science that's being done is being done through sort of plundered bits and pieces that we found up here in space. But I'll get back to that in a minute, because let's go through let's go through what's been happening in chronological order. So we'll have a look at the back down here on Norvis. This is my uh, rocket launch cargo rocket launch facility that you will have um, seen a couple of, uh, quite a bit in the in the last uh, episode, or at least the the part of it over here. Um, and since then we've we've added to it quite a bit. So the first little thing was over here where I've expanded the number of rocket control modules we're making. So now there's now there's plenty of them. As you can see, there's plenty of rocket chunks going up, uh, rocket module, cargo rocket parts going around here. So we've got plenty here to build up lots and lots of rockets. And I've also got all of these belts feeding in the bottom here and, and the side over there. And this works through the same sort of system that I used in my last playthrough, where you have, although I put it, I put it together a bit more neatly this time because I had the, uh, the opportunity to think about it in advance and learn from my mistakes last time. So what we've got here, now this at the moment is a, is a slightly... Um, it's not quite finished, so we've got the we've got the constant combinators with the shopping list in down here on the planet, which is not how you do it really. Uh, but but it, in this case, it, it should it should work reasonably well for the time being. But these need to be moved away as soon as possible. So each of these has what what I refer to as a shopping list in it, which is all of the things that we want to have in store up in space. So. I've got. I'm requesting a thousand copper plates, a thousand iron plates, a thousand glass, and so on through all of the sort of the, the basic raw resources and the basic processed resources as well. So the sort of things that you're, I'm going to, I reckon I'm going to need up there in in orbit. And these, and the idea of this is that um, you you receive a signal from orbit, which is picked up by this uh, signal receiver here. Now I haven't put the transmitter in for that yet, which is why the uh, this stuff is down here. But the theory sort of the theory still stands and and, and will eventually work. So we have the receiver here that gets a signal from, Nor from Norvis orbit of everything that's up there. We then add these negative numbers on, which means, say for example, we had 800 copper plates up in orbit. Then we'd have 800 coming out of here. We'd have minus 1,000 from here. So we'd then get minus 200 coming out and being on, on, this, on this red cable in total. That would come down to here. And this piece of uh, belt control down here is put, bringing the copper cables off the bus and is monitoring for copper plates being less than zero and if copper plates are ever less than zero then it'll feed some through then this this will start to flow the belts the, the plates will flow through here through here through here onto this belt will run up here and be put into the rocket so this what this means that as we use up resources in orbit we'll gradually be asking for more and more of them and we'll put more and more into the rocket and eventually we'll set the rocket to launch automatically when the cargo is full and we can send that up and it will bring me everything that's needed up in orbit to carry on with doing, doing all of the science and things that are being do, done up there so this works as i say in exactly the same way that we had it running in the um, in the previous uh pre previous game in the 0.5 playthrough which is a lot neater because i've actually planned it a little bit in advance so if we look at one of these uh, pylons, you can see there that there's actually fairly positive numbers of all of those things that are being taken up into, into orbit. And now there's a couple of reasons for that. One of them is I've been going around salvaging stuff from the various wrecks and things up there. So that's got me quite a lot of free stuff, particularly science packs. So there's a lot of extra science packs up there already. Although those aren't being counted because, we, as I said earlier, we aren't transmitting the signal back down yet. The reason that they're all fairly positive is because you'll notice that there's a fairly big gap between where the, the filtering is actually done and stuff being put into the rocket. So when you say, yes, actually, that's enough copper, you still have this extra part on this belt going along here that will go into the rocket anyway and, and, and fill it up a little bit further. So I reckon that, it, that that's absolutely fine because you get through stuff in sufficiently large quantities that if you order 1,000 and you get 1,100, who cares? You're going to get through it fairly quickly anyway. So all of that stuff is still going to get used up. And if you end up taking up slightly more than you intended, well, it doesn't really matter. The other thing I've got in here to prevent overflow. So in here, if we look here, you can see that we've also got the sig the at the bottom there. You can see the one rocket, um, com one complete rocket signal as well. So we, we're using that on these bits of belt here to monitor for when to only pass stuff through when cargo rocket is equal to one, as in when the rocket has been finished. And the idea of that is that one of the things I've noticed from previous runs is that when the rocket launches. You suddenly you lose all of the uh, the signals on the network here for the time that it takes for the rocket to fly from here up into Norvis orbit and land and unload into the um, in, in, into the landing pad. And so during that time, you get all of the stuff that was on this rocket gets tries to get fed through again. So what I want to do here is to essentially turn off the loading of the rocket for a little while 
um, after the rocket has been after the rocket has been launched. And the easiest way to do that, that I th I thought, was to just have it monitor and wait until the rocket has actually been built again using the um, the parts that come in here, and and then and, and to tell you that the rocket has been finished, and therefore some time has passed and the other rocket has probably landed and so on. The other advantage of this is that there is a there is an edge case problem you can run into with a rocket where the rocket fills up completely with stuff and then there isn't room to put the rocket parts in in order to actually build the rocket. So you filled up the cargo space but you need space a bit of space in there to put the uh, the parts in which will then be taken out again to be made into the actual rocket itself. So this will also prevent too much stuff being passed up from here and going into the rocket and to um because we don't when we get, because we don't want to do that until the rock we don't want to start loading stuff in until the rocket's been finished. So down here we have basically all all the things that we saw just just now when I was, when we were looking at the um at the at the signals. So we've got all of the we've got the raw materials. We've got think all of all four types of motors. We've got all three types of circuits somewhere across here. Raw materials. We've got all this all the science packs that are being made. All of those getting fed straight up into the um into the rocket and loaded up. So now we've got all of that stuff in here. All of all of the raw resources, the motors, the circuits, uh, some spare rocket parts to bring it to to make a rocket to come back if I decide I want to do that rather than using the pod, um, because the pod has some funny ideas about what you're allowed to take with you. We are transporting some liquid by barrel at the moment, which is absolutely horrible. But at the very start, I think we're going to have to do at least a little bit of it, which is very disappointing. But I think essentially unavoidable. So we're bringing a little bit of liquid up by barrel, and then loads and loads of science packs down here because. We're going to need a lot of science, especially the military ones, and I'll tell, touch on why that is in a moment. Over here, we've got um, we've got barrel, uh, a barreling area, so we've got uh, steel coming in, being made into barrels, and then being loaded up with water or lube. And then these ones up here will be for other stuff in the future if we if I decide I need it. But I'm hoping not to. I'm hoping to get coal liquefaction up and running in space quite soon, and ideally ice mining. And there is a bit of ice on the asteroid up there, so hopefully we'll be able to um, not use too many barrels. We've got some here, just in case. We're also feeding in the. Um, uh, space assemb assembly machines. That's about the only th space thing you can actually build down on the ground down here because um, all of the other stuff, all of the other space, well, everything's space belts go in here instead. So, space belts made in a space assembly machine or a space manufacturer, so only in space. Space underground, same. Space pipes, oh, oh no, space, pi oh, space underground pipes you can make. Space pipes you can only make in space. Space scaffolding you can only make in space and so on so there's going to be in my previous run i was taking enormous quantities of space belts space scaffolding space everything up into space in the rocket because it's it's easier to build on norvis and it's cheaper from a logistics point of view because that you can stack if we look at if we look at space scaffolding it takes a low density structure a heat shield and a steel plate to make it all of those things i can make on norvis but then i have to ship them up and combine them whereas if i combine them down on norvis then i'd be able to just take up the one thing and so I'm not quite sure off the top of my head exactly how those all, how the stacks all compare, but you'd be able to take a lot, you'd be able to fit a lot more heat shield, sorry, uh, space pack platform scaffold into the rocket than you'd be able to fit the ingredients to make an amount of, if that makes sense. So it is much more efficient to make it on the ground, but unfortunately we can't. So that's going to have to be done up in space. So I did all of this, got this up and running. We've got over here, we've got, uh, we're making uh, the up here, we're what are we making here? Oh yeah, we're making pipes to make um, are these. What are these things? Uh, life support facilities um, and pumps to make them as well. And then we're also using a life support facility here and the pipes that come from here in order to make uh, the what are these things? These are called life support equipment in order to make thruster suits. So we've got a, we've got a spare thruster suit in there, so somebody can grab along and come along and grab it if they need it. Um, if if not, they can whatever it doesn't matter uh, they can uh, they'll, they'll, they'll always should always be one available there and then there's another one available in here so as soon as that one's taken there'll be another available and then we'll build a third one and and so on that's also using jetpacks so i'll come back to those when i talk about what tristan's been up to i put down some more life support facilities over here so we've got a system that's building a um uh the empty empty life empty canisters here sort of secure canisters then it's turning them into life support canisters by adding a blue by adding a blue circuit then it's tur for turning them into actual proper life support canisters by um using with some coal and some water presumably putting in a filter of some sort i'm not sure exactly how that's supposed to work but that's then unloading them here into this uh, red chest and these should probably also be being loaded onto the rocket because i want to make sure i've got lots of those in space because as you can see at the moment i've got 69 of them but the time on this one is 20, only 24 seconds i've only got an hour and 55 minutes of life support left so if i spend the next stream up in space that won't be enough 
and then we've got a recycling facility here that will take the uh, another life support facility that takes in the used life support canisters washes them out and then passes out clean life support canisters that can then be refilled here so and, and as usual I've got a red cable going from here to here that's saying if there are any in this chest sorry uh, yes, if there are any in this chest, then this this inserter shouldn't run. So we'll use the ones that the, we'll use the recycled ones first, and then use new ones when we absolutely have to. So, yep, that's that's. I mean, that's it's working. Um, it's just there's a bit of a. Um, it's it's just it takes a little while to make them, and they're not being brought up into space yet. So that's the thing that I definitely need to do. So I built up all of that. That got me to the point where I had a rocket, I had stuff in the rocket, and I had a spacesuit. So I was ready to go to space. I was about to blast off with my rocket full of useful stuff to Norvis orbit, but then it occurred to me that there's actually a, a, a stranded spaceship in Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1. So we had a bit of a look at that and a bit of a think, and we decided that since the um, the first rocket that goes to orbit is going to crash anyway, we don't ideally we don't want to have that full of stuff because we'll lose some of the stuff. It'll just get lost because that's what happens when a rocket crashes. So. And then it was decided, actually, a better way to do this would be to stick a landing pad in my inventory, to build a second rocket silo here that has since been demolished, fill it up really quickly, build a, a second rocket, and fly over to um, Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1, crash land there, sure, um, but then there wouldn't be anything in the rocket, so it doesn't really matter too much. Gather up all of the stuff, pile it into the spaceship over there, and then I was able to repair the spaceship and then fly it from Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1 over to Norvis Orbit. Um, it, and it went reasonably quickly. It's, it's driven by ion engines. It didn't have enough power because the number of solar panels we've got in it here aren't actually enough, but it was able to fly over to Norvis, uh, Norvis Orbit. So I got to Norvis Orbit, got out there, started cleaning up and tidying Norvis Orbit as well. There was a lot of a lot of junk there that needed to be sorted out um, because it was another sort of another archaeological dig essentially. Ha uh, so there's lots and lots of ruins that I pulled up, but also quite a lot of boxes that were full of useful stuff. So between the two of them, we gained quite a lot of science packs, loads of really fast uh, space belts and um, various other machinery so at the moment all of the stuff that's built up here in Norvis orbit has been has been done has been used has been made from the salvaged stuff from Norvis orbit and from as the asteroid belt one so we're down here we've got a warehouse full of lots and lots of well lots and lots of junk to be honest but also some useful stuff so there's a load of coal there's a load of sulfur there's some raw material more raw materials these rocket parts these are probably the ones left yeah these are probably the ones left that were recovered from my original crash rocket ship but we've got Quite a lot of active provider chest, buffer chest, requester chest, all these things that we can't actually make yet um, because we haven't researched them. Then we've got some these deep space belts, which are really fast. These are 90 items per second, which is amazing. Uh, various underground belts, inserters, some of the massive pylon substations. Those are fantastic. I love those. Um, I'm, I'm going to miss those when, uh, when I've once I've used up this one. And there's only 20 of the pylons. Look at the, the pylons are great because they allow you can pass electricity over a long distance. They're like a, a big electric pole, but with twice the distance but the substations have that and a massive coverage area as well so these they're they're amazing i can't wait to get those up and running properly um and just some miscellaneous bits and pieces we've got some ro rocket silos some landing pads some bits of spaceship which is no way we could make at the moment because we haven't got spaceships yet and various other buildings and, and whatnot so we, we salvaged up a lot of stuff and i was able to use that to get science up and running initially so so far i think we've actually not really made any science packs we've just run off what was available in all of the storage space but we've done quite a few of the um the sciences that actually require deep space shenaniganery uh, or space sorry space science not deep space we're nowhere near deep space so we've done the um, we've done the space capsule navigation and we've done space platform scaffold off just what was there um, we seem to have also done advanced radars which is even even better radars and that requires a um, a utility science pack so that that feels like a bit of a waste of utility sciences I'm not sure we should have been doing that one yet um, but still it's um, too late now we're also going to try and do uranium ammo uh, artillery and then we're going to need space manufacturers and apparently we'll, we want automation three i don't know if that's that higher priority really um the automation two uh, what, what do you get no you just get as fast assembly machines of that so personally i don't think i really care about that but maybe maybe there's a reason that we're, we're doing that that someone else is, uh, is, 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 uh, is aware of however i did also use the bits and pieces that i had with me to build up this science facility so we're not it, yes, we are just using the um, the stuff we got for free at the moment. So there's still a, a, some science packs in here, still some steel, still some stone and so on in here. Um, 
but we're also I've also set up the equipment here to start making the, the science properly so over here we've got we've got a decent supply of cosmic water which is made out of lube and um, and water but this is why we need more water and lube to come up here so we can carry on feeding this machine because you need lube for deep space uh, sorry for not for deep you need lube for space belts and you need it for as I say for the cosmic water for the space science packs so once we get that rocket up here uh, this should all start to work very very nicely in fact let's 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 do that let's let's bring the rocket up just for fun it's a little bit spoilers um, because we haven't done this on stream yet but I'm gonna launch this one anyway um, as you can see this is now all getting passed through which is a bit of a shame um, because that isn't quite how this is supposed to work but never mind this is just very much a temporary thing I don't really care and as you can see there we go there's the, um, the rocket parts being put in to build the rocket and it's at 44 percent 46 percent if we go back up here we'll see this now land and if I'm being efficient, I can quickly look in here. I can grab the transmitter. It's been passed over to here already. Uh, no, because it's on this side. Learn to play the game, Lawrence. Okay, I don't know where that tr transmitter has gone. Um, there's supposed to be one in here somewhere. But that, that should then send signals back with all of the stuff that's available up here. But as you can see, this is now unloading all of the stuff from the uh, landing pad into the into the warehouse. And it can now be passed along here. And we can start to actually make the, make the sciences from it. Now, the biggest thing that we're missing at the moment is the... Um, is the military science of so these ones. So let's take a stack of those, shove them in here. And then these get those get automatically passed out. They come around here on this belt. And now we can start doing the uranium ammo research. So this is this is the point of what we've got here. We've got all of the science packs being fed round over to over to here where they can we can then do start to do the science with them. Now this is worth mentioning, this is very, very early game um uh set up. So with this we'll probably use this system until we've until we've developed um space scaffolding this stuff and until we develop until we've got a decent supply of um, space belt underground belts all, all the space belts basically and then we'll probably pull up quite a lot of this and then start to just have a main bus that will probably head out this way because main buses traditionally go to the east unless there's a reason not to once we've done that we can then start thinking about making the the first tier of all the colorful sciences and just get on with that and eventually we'll get to the point where we're ready where we have space trains and we can start thinking about going doing a proper town system up here but it's going to be quite a lot of steps to, to get to that point so it's going to be it's going to be a little while over here this is the patch of water ice as i was talking about so um at some point we'll get drop down some miners on here we'll start mining drilling this up digging it up melting it into water and then at that point we can stop bringing water up We'll also then be able to start thinking about doing coal liquefaction up here in space and then we'll be able to stop bringing lube up because we'll be able to turn the coal into oil and therefore into lube. But I believe that coal liquefaction is one of those... Yeah, coal liquefaction is another thing that's gated behind space science. So we can't do it. We can't couldn't do it before and until we get production science up and running as well, we're not going to be able to do it up here. So there's... We're going to get... We're going, there's going to be a bit more stuff needs to be done before we can get coal liquefaction going. So until then we are doomed to be bringing up barrels. Now, conveniently, barrels can be crushed in the in one of these uh, recycling facilities. And we've only got... A f How many have we got building up in here? There's quite a lot coming through at the moment, but we are chipping away at them at a rather slow rate. And those get turned back into steel, which we put into here, and then we will eventually use for... Well, it can come down this belt here and be used for making the space science. So, in theory, those barrels will get used up. We'll do something sensible with them. We don't need to worry about them just taking over the world. But eventually we will want to stop to move away from barrels because they're just a pain. <laughs> and I did one other thing as well before before I before I went up to Norvis. I've got a little bit I got a little bit excited about talking about space. So uh, yeah, there was another another thing I did before I went up there was and that was to improve or at least change the way that the core fragment pulverization is done. So before we had I think we had four columns. Yes, we had four columns of the of the pulverizers running basically flat out, and that was just about enough to to stay ahead of what was coming through. So I thought, but this is this is all just free stuff, free resources. So let's stick in some productivity modules to get more free stuff. We like free stuff. Free stuff is great. So I've put in these productivity modules in each one of these and that has boosted the productivity by 24%. So we're getting an extra quarter of everything that comes out of these things, which is great because, you know, as I say, free stuff. Unfortunately, it's brought the crafting speed down by 60%. So we're running at 40% of the speed these things were normally were running at before. So in order to try and fix that, I doubled the number of machines. So we've gone from two four columns to eight columns as you can see here um i didn't do it particularly sensibly uh, there's there's some changes i would would, would like to make to the uh, to the systems here but I, I i haven't done yet um maybe i'll do that in the next stream um just to pack everything in a, bit, a little bit more neatly and a bit more tidily um the there's a couple of problems with this one is that 
dropping the speed by 60% and then doubling the number of machines is not actually keeping it running at the same speed as before. So we are now we now have a completely full warehouse here. We have a lot of um, and we have completely full warehouses down here. So we have completely backed up on core fragments. So we need to have basically we need to tidy this up a little bit and then probably double it again. So we've got another set of uh, another four or eight um, root columns of the of the pulverizers and then that's going to mean we're going to need ideally i'd like to upgrade these to blue belts because as you can see the belts are completely full and that is um yeah that's actually not causing any back pressure yet anywhere well a tiny bit here but basically basically the belts of these belts are fast enough to take all the stuff away but they are pretty much full so i think yeah we're we're probably okay at this point but if we need to put, if we want to put in any more machines, we're going to need additional belts coming across here, which means we're going to think need to think about what we're doing over here. Now we can clearly lose one of these belts for the uranium. That's probably that's, that'll be fine. We can, I reckon, we can lose one of the coal belts as well. So that's that's room for that'd be one one two. There's a third space there, a fourth one there. So we can have another four belts going in. So given that one of these belts seems to be doing every pair of columns, that's another four belt. Four more belts means another eight columns. So I think that will be in, that will be enough. But we're starting to get to the point where we're we're going to need to do some major upgrades hit to the belts here, or perhaps have a second uh, sorting um, facility, sorting warehouse facility. Um, that said, if we upgrade everything to blue belts at some point in the not too distant future, then maybe things will be okay. Um, as it is, we've got. None of these belts are remotely full because we're taking in, essentially we're taking in four belts and we're feeding out 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 belts at the other side. So yeah, they're not going to be full. We could probably drop, we could perhaps steal some of these, but until we need to, I think we probably shouldn't. But yeah, so that's the uh, that's the core mining. It's been improved a bit, but needs a bit of further work. It Part of the reason we've built up such a major backlog, um, other than the fact that we're bringing it in faster than it's being used up um, is because I made a bit of a mistake with the, uh, when it, with the with the piping when I put the put the extra ones in and need to go in and fix that but now that's been done they are these these are all working at full speed as you can tell by the amount of stuff that's coming out the top here so simply we just need more of these machines and that's not going to be particularly difficult we can we can do that uh, e easily enough so that's the stuff I've been doing uh, Tristan has added fueling to the uranium bus that's great so there's a oh there's a station another an extra station stuck in down here which is dropping off the refined fuel being brought up and then loaded into all of the locomotives that'll stop in here great that's nice and simple but needs needs doing otherwise the uh, the trains risk running out of fuel especially because some of these things might be going to non-central places so the the uranium mines for example won't have a fueling system the smeltery probably does Yes, the smeltery does have a fueling system, so the trains taking away the iron ore would be absolutely fine, and the stone would be fine, but the trains taking away the uranium and bringing in the uranium ore wouldn't be, so yep, we needed fueling in there. <laughs> he had a, he, Tristan also had a bit of a catastrophe where, uh, I forget exact. I forget what happened, oh yes, I know, I do remember what happened. Um, so this, this, um, we, we've got a, a warehouse here doing the standard balancing and filtering thing, so if I look at this warehouse, we can see it's got a logistics filter set up on it, but... Tristan forgot to set the logistics filter, so this just summoned everything. It picked up all kinds of nonsense and put it out onto the iron bus. However, he has then gone along and cleaned that up, so um, well done there. <laughs> there is a belt pointing the wrong way here. That needs to be fixed. Um, that's going to be easy enough. We'll, we'll, I think that is on, on the to-do list already, though, so we'll, that, that'll be sorted out. It's not the end of the world, but it is reducing the amount of iron that can be passed all the way down here. Um, and are we using iron up particularly quickly? We're not using iron up particularly quickly, so to be honest doesn't really matter right now but it's one of those things that you need to, you want to keep fixed up um, he's tidied up the heat shielding so we've got heat shielding coming in from have we got heat shielding coming in from somewhere from another from another town no i don't think we have but apparently it was i think we've got a station that's ready for it and it was apparently feeding onto the wrong belt on the bus so that's that's been sorted good um now the most interesting thing it's way down the end of the bus, beyond the life support stuff I was building. So Tristan has now also been putting stuff on the bus. We've got all kinds of funny business being made here now. So we've got, um, these are some kind of electric electric engines for uh, for trains. And what are these? These are Roboport 2s. No, vehicle Roboports. Aha. And personal Roboports and cogs and part that are required to make those. Fine. Um, oh, and personal Roboports are being fed out into a passive provider chest as well. So we can we can pick those up if later if we if we need them. For some reason, Tristan seems to use yellow inserters for everything, which is a bit disgusting, but we'll, we'll let him off for now. He's also making jetpacks, some of which I've purloined in order to make my thruster suits, and also to fill up my thruster suit with jetpacks so I can move around a bit quicker. Uh, making batteries, these are presumably... Are these personal batteries? These are personal batteries and vehicle batteries. Oh, and energy absorbers, right. So, yeah, and also... T 
Tesla towers. What are they actually called? Tesla coils. Right. So these are not the, these are not unlike in uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert. Tesla coils are not weapons. They are charging devices. So you can put an energy receiver into your inventory and a battery into your inventory, and then if you stand within the rate within range of one of these, then it will charge. It will use the um, energy capture thing to charge up your battery. So so instead of needing to um, instead of needing to have a generator or a fuel burner or solar panels or whatever in your inventory you can stand next to one of these it'll and it'll charge your battery charge your, your personal batteries back up in your suit um this is this would be great if you're standing out somewhere um building things from your own personal robot ports um but the main use for these the most useful thing is for vehicles specifically trains so i believe uh the the, the um look oh, no not that I'm just gonna do it from here i can't down. I can't. I can't view what's in the train. Oh, so I can. There we go. So here in the trains, you uh, trains have equipment grids as well. So what Tristan's done here is put in a massive quantity of engines, eight engi eight additional engines, and an energy absorber, and some big personal batteries. And the trains are all parked within range of these Tesla coils. So the idea is your personal train will, will park here. It'll charge up from the Tesla coil. It's char charged up its internal batteries, and then whenever you want to go anywhere, it'll accelerate incredibly quickly. I. Um, I don't know whether it'll accelerate, whether whether the top speed is improved as well, but the acceleration apparently is. I've not actually driven any of these yet, but I gather they're um, they're a bit quick, should we say? Uh, and and then all of that is done through power from the Tesla coils here. So that's uh, and that that works really nice. I believe works really nicely. As I say, I haven't played with it myself, but it it should work. Ah, he's put some numbers in here as well. So eight lots of 30% movement bonus. It's, we're assuming it's additive, so you add the 30% together, uh, in which case it's going to, going to give you a 340% uh, speed bonus. Um, no, sorry, 340% total, not uh, not, multi not multiplicative, in which case it would be 816%, which just seems a bit, perhaps a bit ridiculous. Um, <laughs> we'll, uh, we, we, we shall see. Who, who knows? They're, they're fast anyway, and that's what matters. And now there's ah oh, actually I said that I said the most exciting thing was all of this infrastructure it was stuff for the trains that's not actually true he's worked on something far more exciting than that so this is a sort of a two-part thing so up here he's made a a battery building uh, building town so we've got the usual stations requesting all the bits and pieces you need so presumably sulfuric acid and copper and steel I think um, and iron I think I think that's what goes into those uh, we've got we're merging belt side merging here there's a, a rogue belt here so I'm not sure what that's doing but um, never mind. So we've got, yeah, we've got that coming up here to, to make, to make then in this massive field of assembly machines, we're going to make lots and lots of batteries. There's some power missing at the top, but never mind. Um, and some air filtering missing as well. So we, he's made a good, good start on that. But the particular, this, the especially interesting thing about this is, is he's been playing with the ghost planner system. And the ghost planner is a thing that allows you to get a signal out of a, um, out of a robo network that tells you what hasn't been built in the area. So what ghosts are around it. And you can then feed that into a potentially into a signal transmitter and pass it back to um, a receiver down here. here. So here it is. Here's the uh, the Norvis construction receiver. And then with some cunning shenaniganery and signals, you can pass that through into a, a load of logic here, which will essentially request all of the things from the logistics network that are required to finish off that construction. They'll go into this blue um, blue warehouse here. They'll be passed into the train. The train can then be sent off to the um, to where your building site is and then you know you've got all of the stuff you need to do the building up here in the in the site and if perhaps you end up realizing you haven't you can always send the train back to get another load of stuff as well so it's going to be a much easier way of getting a massive outpost like this built up without having to worry about forgetting half the stuff you're taking this should just be make should make just building all this sort of stuff up much much easier and quicker and simpler and just generally nicer so I'm looking forward to having a good play with this myself. Although, given that I seem to have left Norvis, I don't know how much more of that I'll be doing. I'll also be making a, um, a how-to video on how, how all of this works at some point, once I've understood it myself. Because I think this is a really, really useful system. So, well done for building that up. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing it played with and, and having a go with it myself, if I ever get the chance. Um, and we do need a heat shield tile town somewhere on Norvis at some point as well because we're not making them anything like fast enough down here on the bus, wherever we are, wherever, here, where we're making them. This is isn't enough it because i don't know why not but it's just not enough well it's it's not enough because there's only so many machines in here and we're going to have a massive demand on it in the if for uh, stuff that's being made in space because everything it feels like everything you make in space requires heat shield tiles in some form or another so yeah we're going to need a lot of those <laughs> Oof. Uh, so it sounds like the uh, the construction train has, has been a, a mixed success, he says. It needs a bit of tidying up afterwards. There's a, a little bit of a little bit more work required on that, but the basic design 
is working quite is, is working nicely uh, I can't even find it here here yes here the basic design is working nicely but needs a bit more work and a bit more tweaking and and finishing off before it's actually before it's actually ready so that's but I think that's a, that's a, that's a really exciting development I'm looking forward as I say looking forward to playing with that right I think that brings us to the, the, the end end of the first part of this video as ever there will be a second part tomorrow that's going to talk about what uh, Mike and Mark have been up to and they've I've got I've got a list list of things from them to talk about so there's, a, there's definitely definitely more stuff to uh, to be discussed and also we'll think about the future in that video as well because uh, the last couple of streams, Mike has mostly been doing combat stuff, so there's a bit less for me to talk about with that because he's just. I'm not going to say he's not been doing anything or anything not been doing anything exciting, but there's a, it doesn't. It only takes a couple of minutes to talk about how much shooting he's been doing, whereas it's taken him four hours to do all of it. So, yeah, we need we need a little bit of extra to, uh, a little bit extra to talk about in the, in, the, in the next stream. So please check out this channel sponsor. That's trefoil.be. If you go to trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, then you'll get your first month absolutely free. So that's um, fantastic. No, no reason not to check them out there now. Um, and they're also doing a special Halloween giveaway as well. So if you look around their website, there'll be various sort of spooky themed things on there. This is obviously is a, an October thing for Halloween. If you can find all of them, then you enter in enter in for prize to get an additional three months free. So if you get that and um, and and my and you get the free month free from um, using the code Lawrence plays and you get four free months to start with uh, to use on your Minecraft server or your Factorio server or whatever else you decide you want to play so there'll be another Factorio video tomorrow then there'll be a Dyson sphere program video on Sunday to get again keep helping you keep keeping you up to date on with everything that's been going on on the streams I recommend checking out uh, last Tuesday's spaceship automation tutorial video I'd had a lot of feedback saying that I hadn't really gone into enough detail in the um, in my initial video um, and or rushed through the the, uh, the the part when I was talking about how to program the spaceship so I've gone over that in a bit more with a bit more uh, detail and a bit a bit more slowly so hopefully that'll give everyone all the information they need um, I'm also planning a Factorio rocket race for the 15th of October. So that's going to be a um, we're going to be using Creative Mod for that for various reasons, and, and there'll be some interesting rules to make it uh, to hopefully make it a bit of a challenge and a bit different from anything you've tried before. So come along to the join the uh, Discord server and ask to be signed up for that. And uh, then on the 15th of October we can play through, see who can make who can build the rocket most uh, most quickly. Um, there'll be a price for that as well. That's the, uh, the that, that'll be a year's membership to my channel, so that gives you early access to uh, all of the sort of the non-update videos and that sort of thing. So, yep, definitely worth signing up for that. Come along and to see what's going on. And so, I look forward to seeing you in the uh, in the next streams. Monday for Factorio, Wednesday for Dyson Sphere program. And as ever, thank you for watching.